Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Umbriel and I hope you tuned in to uh, join us in the acrylic stash down cow. So today I have another stash down video. This is part four. I'll link the playlist up above if you're interested uh, to watch the first three parts. Uh, today I want to uh, do another stashing down my acrylic yarn stash, busting down. <laughs> okay, you know what I'm saying. Acrylic stash down. Um, and I'm going to do a crochet project. And I want to show you what I'm going to do in my blanket that I showed in part three. And third part of this video is going to be I'll show you all of my acrylic yarn. I have it right in front of me. I'll put it all out. I'll weigh it so in the future I can say, okay, I've needed this much for my stash and I have this much to go because I really just want to get it all done. So I don't know how long this cow is going to take. Um, let's just say we'll just start it and we'll see. Maybe the end of the year, maybe next year. Who knows? Just join me in uh, stashing down your acrylic yarn stash um, and use the hashtag on Instagram. I don't have any prizes yet, but we'll see how we'll do that. So yeah, first up the pattern that I'm going to use this time, I'm going to crochet. I want to crochet this bag. It's the mushroom tote bag by Rachel Feinstra and it's a free pattern, so you can do it as well. And I thought it was fun to do a crochet bag or a crochet project this time um, because any craft is, you can use your acrylic yarn for anything you want. <laughs> There's no rules. So um, yeah, I'll just uh, start with that, with making the bag and then I'll show you the other things in this video. So let's get started. So I found all of these colors in my acrylic yarn stash. Uh, I found this yellow one that I unraveled um, from a different project I was working on. I want to use that one for the circles of the pattern. This leftover from my terrazzo neck as the stems. Let's see if that's enough. And then all of the fun colors for the... Um, so these two. All of these fun colors for the little like heads of the um, toadstools. Uh, and then this as the main color to attach everything together. So I feel like that would be a fun project. So let's just get started. I made two little stems for the mushrooms. So I got this memorized now how to make this. So I'm gonna make the other 11. So I have two little stems. Here they are. And then I finished my first square. Um, yeah, I think it looks good. I had some trouble uh, like keeping track on how many stitches I had here, but I think it looks pretty neat. So that's good. The only thing is that I don't really like how big the, the holes are here at the edges, but maybe it's fine. I think I'll just, I'm not gonna change it for the other ones, but that's just the only thing. And I, I decided to hold this yarn at the edge double because it's kind of thin. So I can show you here. It's super thin if you crochet with it 
separately. So I decided to hold that double and I figured out something really cool to attach it to the uh, to the yellow yarn because at the last stitch when you want to join your first and last stitch of the final round together you slip stitch using the color and the outside border that's kind of always how I join colors in crocheting is I uh, attach the yarn in the last stitch of the previous color because then you start off with the right color but because I had two colors I just pulled one of the um, I mean I have two threads I pulled one of the threads through and then um, magic knotted them together and then just pulled up a loop so then I don't have any ends to weave in and it's secured really nicely so that's really good um, yeah so I'll just continue on these little things I was worried if I was going to have enough yarn uh, because this is all I have left of this color but I think I will because this didn't use any basically uh, so I'm just going to be making the other one Hello, so I have 
a whole stack of these now. Another three here. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then this is number nine. And I need 13. I don't know if I said that. And I think the most fun part to do is actually the border. Also, I feel like I'm super stash bus busting when I'm doing that because I'm holding these together and see they're already like getting less yarn on them. So that's great. Uh, and I'm going to be using this whole double too for straps and like attaching everything together. So although maybe for attaching it together, I'll use one just so it's not as bulky. I think I'm going to plan on doing um, like slip stitches. So just hold two together with the right sides and then just slip stitch along here and then you can flip it open. I think that's how I'm going to do it, but I'll see what I do when I get there. But I thought it was fun to show you. I made all the little stems. So these are all the stems. I actually made one too many because I need 13 granny squares, but the bottom one will be empty. So it will be one empty one. And I made 13 of, 13 of these stems, but that's okay. So this is a stem. And then I made a little mushroom top. I actually made three of the ones in this color. So this will be the top of the mushroom and then this will be the stem. So there is a little mushroom and then that will go on top of here. So I don't really know if it's a tension thing, but the first iteration of this uh, mushroom top that I made was really small. So I ended up uh, if you're going to use the pattern, it's a free pattern, so I can just talk about it. But if you're going to use the pattern, then um, I just started with two extra stitches. And then did the exact same thing as the pattern. So it's like, it's one extra row taller, and it's a little wider. So this, this is what it's going to look like. I think that's pretty cute. So there's going to be all these mushrooms on there. I don't know if it's too like autumn-y autumn or fall-like to have mushrooms, but it's just fun. <laughs> it's okay. I'll use any bag that I have. So I made three of these tops. I made all of the stems in the same color. And then I'm going to make, I have three more colors that I want to use. So I'm gonna make three of the tops for each of those colors. So I have 12 mushroom tops. Um, and then I have 13 of these. And then I'll have 13 of the um, granny squares. And then I just attach everything together. That's basically what it is. And then I can choose which one is not as pretty as the other ones that I don't use of the stems. So yeah, I'm just going to continue uh, working on the granny squares. I just kind of want to finish all of them today, which I think is achievable. What did I say? Eight. So this is my ninth one, and then I just need three more. No, four more. Yeah. So I was also thinking kind of looks either like a sun or like an egg. <laughs> uh, there's not enough white, I guess, for an egg, but can be my, like it's an egg with a mushroom on it. Bag. Okay. Anyway. I finished everything. So I have all my squares and I sewed or I crocheted four of them together. I've done it a little too tightly. I've used one of the 
strands of the white yarn that I'm using. I think I want to I think it's fine for this bottom one because you want it to be super sturdy. Oh wait, it's gonna go like this. You kind of want that bottom to be super sturdy, but I think I'm gonna do the other ones with two strands. So it's a little less uh, tight. And I'm just gonna follow the diagram from the uh, pattern to lay it out exactly as that, and then sew the mushrooms on. So talking about the mushrooms, I have finished all of the tops. So here's the aqua blue, the lilac, so it's three of each, the light blue, and the pink. So all four of the colors. I think they look really cute together. And the nice thing is at every level in height of this bag, there's four different squares. So I'm going to do like pink, aqua, uh, lilac, light blue, and then like spiral it around kind of. So, but I'm going to sew them on after I made the whole layout. So I'm just going to keep it flat, not attach these yet the side ones but i'm gonna make them i'll see if i can put in the little schematic that they made so i'm gonna put the whole schematic down first so flat then sew everything on just so i'm sure that i have it facing the right way because when i was sewing this on i already made a error in my head so i'm glad that I waited <laughs> to do that. So yeah, and here's all the stems. What's crazy is that this is all I have left over of the yellow yarn that I started with. And I don't, I'm not sure if I showed you, but it was this big, no, I, I did. The big cake of yellow yarn. This is all that's left over. So I used up a lot of that for the uh, squares. Yeah, so I'm just gonna continue sewing everything together and I'm gonna start, I, I th already thought of a plan. I'm just gonna start, so on one side, I'm gonna start here, attach this one, attach the middle one, attach the other side of the middle one, and then attach the other side. So that's the plan for the one side and then after that, cut the yarn, start again. And then the other side is gonna be even easier because I can start right here, attach this one, attach this one, then attach the new one, and then attach this one. Does that make sense? Probably doesn't make sense. So, like this. Because there's gonna be one here and here. Okay, you'll see. I'll just uh, attach it. All right, so I'm gonna do that right now.
I have good news and bad news. <laughs> good news is I sewed everything together. Yay! So I got all the mushrooms on. I think it looks pretty cute. My eggs with mushrooms bag. And then I started the straps. And there comes in the bad news. Well, I put a little tie in it last night, but they're facing the wrong way. So for some reason last night, I wasn't thinking that clearly and I thought it didn't matter which side uh, would get the strap openings, but you want to have it like this. So you want the straps to go from here to here and now they're going from here to here. So I'm going to have to take all that out. So I think it's good to to include you in that, to include you in the mistakes too, because not everything is smooth sailing. Also, there was another thing that wasn't smooth sailing was when I put all the, when I pieced all the squares together, I went a wrong direction <laughs> at some point. So frogging is just part of, part of the, journey i guess so i'm just gonna frog all the single crochets that i did around the edges and by the way what i did was i did 90 uh chains for the straps the pattern said that they did um 105 but the original pattern is 70. So I just tried it out a little bit when I was uh, working on it and 90 seemed to be good. So yeah, frying time. Hi, it is finished. I just took it on a little test drive, basically. I took it with me to the park and it fits so much stuff. So I have a knitting project in there, my wallet, and then I have my phone and my rain jacket all in here. And there was still room for more. So that was great. The only thing when it was like I had a lot of stuff in there, it like stretched out and then you could see that the stem and the top of the mushroom aren't attached, but that's okay. So I want to do one more thing. I want to, because this is what the inside looks like. <laughs> um, I want to tie knots and just snip them off. Not really gonna weave those in. I did weave in the ends around the edges. So here you can see I wove in a little bit. That's the inside. So you wanna see that from the outside. And I'm gonna try to block it because the seams that I made are kind of tight. So if you look at it, then you can see it's kind of bobbly. So I want to try to see if blocking it helps. Um, and in case you're wondering, I think I'm just going to block it just like I block my knits. I'm just going to put it in some water with some soap and roll it up in a towel. 
and then that's it basically and yeah i'm a little sweaty <laughs> it's super humid here it's like the worst summer in the netherlands ever this is what i remember from when i was a teenager that it was sometimes like this just cloudy and rainy all the time but right now it's super humid just the even the air inside the house feels wet if that makes sense yeah and another thing that i noticed by the way i don't know if you can tell but it's already peeling a little bit this is from the green pants that i'm wearing today so yeah i think i would prefer to do this in cotton yarn but i'm trying to stash down my acrylic yarn so acrylic it is So while I wait for my um, bag to dry, I wanted to talk about this because uh, this is that blanket that I started holding three strands of yarn together and I kind of made a decision on not uh, completing this as a blanket um, because I feel like it's kind of has a lot of holes, the gauge is kind of large so uh, yeah so it's 12 millimeter needles so yeah more than a centimeter and the fabric it creates is a little like gapy so i feel like um it wouldn't really function super well as a blanket and i have also been looking at other things to uh, other blankets to make with my acrylic yarn so what I have decided to do is I want to finish this blanket as a scarf. So it's super long, so it's probably long enough already to be a scarf. So I'm just going to do a few more rows in stockinette. Um, and then I'm just going to finish this up. And for those of you who haven't seen this before, I've showed this before in my um, third part of my stashing down my critic yarn stash. So I'm gonna be finishing that. I have the three yarns I'm holding together here, all bunched up. So I'm just gonna be working on that for a little bit and uh, hopefully finish it soonish. So I'm gonna be doing that right now. Well, we're ready for the final part, and that is the reveal. 
of uh, my knitted pieces. So here is the bag in its full glory and all blocked. So there it is, all finished. It smells really nice now after being blocked and it feels a lot softer. So that's nice. So even with acrylic, you can notice a difference when you block stuff. So all I did is just put it into water with some wool wash. So I use wool wash for my uh, acrylic as well, but I was blocking a wool sweater. So, and then I just uh, laid it out to dry. So I squeezed everything out first with a towel. So I rolled it in a towel and then stood on it. Um, and then I left it out to dry and I pulled this a little bit. So that would become a little bigger. Then I also finished this one and it turned out to be super big. So if I would have made this into a blanket, it would have gone. So I'm sitting on our bed right now. It's a king size bed. It would have gone over both ends almost to the ground. <laughs> so if I would have made this into a blanket, it would have been a ginormous blanket. I haven't washed or blocked this at all yet, and I don't think I'm gonna do that until I, well, maybe I will, it's kind of dusty, but look, it wraps around twice easily. So, oops, <laughs> it's way too warm for now, but I can wear it like that. And I think that looks pretty nice, I mean, that's a pretty easy scarf, making it in the vertical instead of in the horizontal. So super nice. And I'll put in some extra clips of my bag um, that I took at the park. So maybe you've already seen those. I don't know how I'm gonna edit this video yet. So those are the two finished objects. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Please join me in the cow and, uh, well, join us because there's already a lot of people who were interested in joining. So join everybody in the cow and, um, use the hashtag on Instagram. Uh, I haven't, uh, thought of anything like prices. So for now, it's just a little knit along and crochet along for those crocheters uh amongst you guys and just use the hashtag acrylic stash down cal even though it's also for crochet um and then just join so i hope uh, you enjoyed this video uh give me a subscribe and turn on the notifications if you want to see when i post a new acrylic stash down video and i'll hope to see you next time bye